What a difference one day can make in this industry. Saturday night, as I was getting ready to go to bed, I felt like the smartest guy in the world. I was pretty much spot on with everything in college football, including a 4-0-1 record here on the Power 5. I also delivered a 4-0 sweep with client plays. Then came Sunday in the NFL, and I wasn't right about a damn thing. The end result, we're now on a 141-114-10 and 10 run here on the Power 5. Yes, 10 pushes. Been pushing quite a bit. Uh, I've got takes on both Major League Baseball playoff series and Monday Night Football for you on today's show. An opportunity to hedge a bet from a couple weeks ago, and a word of warning, we're going prop heavy today. Uh, you can always... Go ahead, let me know what you think of these selections down in the comments section below. And if you agree, don't be afraid to smash that like button. Here we go. Number one, let's start in the daytime and we will go under eight and a half in game two of the NLCS between the Mets and Dodgers. Note, this play assumes the Dodgers are going with a bullpen game this afternoon and not starting Walker Bueller. I would not bet the under today if Bueller ends up starting. But by all accounts, he won't. Look, the Dodgers have not given up a run, guys, in three straight games. They're actually on a 33-inning scoreless streak dating back to Game 3 of the LDS. Sadly, though, I didn't cash the under in Game 1 last night. Why? Well, David Peterson wasn't very good. I warned you about that guy. And then, more importantly, more critically, there was a disastrous sequence in the bottom of the 8th that led to three Dodgers runs being scored when the Mets should have gotten out of the inning with a double play. Just absolutely brutal. The capper to a just crappy, crappy Sunday. But we're moving on to Monday. It is tough to envision anything other than a low-scoring affair here in Game 2 with the way the Dodgers are pitching. Plus, the Mets are going to have their best starter on the mound, Sean Manea. Uh, two postseason starts, Manea. He's allowed three runs in 12 innings pitch. That's it. Going back to the regular season, he's allowed three earned runs or less in 13 of his last 15 starts. The Dodgers were very fortunate to score nine runs yesterday. They did so on just nine hits. So I like the under in Game 2. Moving to the ALCS, a series that I'm sure will be discussed ad nauseum this week on the Morning Wager, as it is my Cleveland Guardians taking on Mark Zinno's New York Yankees. Now, if you caught Friday's edition of the Morning Wager, you got a discussion of potentially hedging some existing MLB futures we'd already bet. We've got one such opportunity here with the ALCS, because if you go back to my LDS preview here on the Power 5, I said to bet the Yankees plus 110 to win the American League pennant. Only if you took that advice and made that bet, let's come back with Cleveland plus 160 on the money line to win the ALCS. That way, we've got plus money on both sides here. I'm quite comfortable with that position and will obviously be rooting for the Guardians, who are the bigger payday, not to mention my hometown team. Excuse me. Uh, now, for tonight's Game 1, our third bet here on the Power 5, let's bet Carlos Rodon under 14 and a half outs. You can get this plus 120 at DraftKings. The bullpen is usually Cleveland's biggest advantage in any matchup, but that's somewhat mitigated coming into the series by the fact manager Stephen Vogt uh, had to really empty out his pen on Saturday to get that Game 5 win over Detroit. The Guardians' best shot at stealing Game 1 is by getting to Rodon as the Yankees starter allowed four runs in his lone LDS start against the Royals. Even if the guards don't get to him, Expect Yankees manager Aaron Boone to have his starter on a short leash here because he's got the far more rested bullpen to turn to right now. Bottom line, I do not expect the Yankees starter to make it through a full five innings tonight. Bet the under 14 and a half on his outs recorded prop. Number four, let's now shift to Monday Night Football where the Jets host the Bills. If you caught Sunday's show, then you know I've got the Jets in a teaser that still has the shot, a shot at cashing. The first leg was Broncos plus nine. That was very lucky uh, to cash, obviously. Now, if you haven't already teased the Jets, I would no longer do so. This line has moved down to plus one for what will be their first game post Robert Sala. Reason I wouldn't tease, obviously, you can no longer get through seven with a standard six-point tease. So let's turn to the prop market. First of two props I've got for you today is Aaron Rodgers' longest completion under 32 and a half yards. Not sure why this number is so high. So far this season, Rodgers has only one game with a completion longer than this number. Over his last four games, no Rodgers completion has gone longer than 27 yards. Now, that being said, another prop I like for tonight. This is how we're going to run. This is our fifth play on the Power Five. 
Jets running back Brees Hall over three and a half receptions. This is a little juicy. You can still bet at minus 130 at FanDuel. But since I'm not expecting Rodgers to create any explosive plays in the passing game, instead, look for him to target Hall underneath. Obviously, I don't care how long these completions uh, to Hall go for, only that he gets at least four catches. In both Jets wins this season, Hall has gone over this number of three and a half receptions. He even had five catches on Monday night back in week one against the 49ers. He had 16 catches through the first three games before only five in the past two. I say Hall gets back involved in the passing game tonight over three and a half receptions. All right, let us now recap the Power Five as we were hitting you from a lot of different directions. Number one, Mets Dodgers under eight and a half. Number two, Guardians plus 160 to win the ALCS. That's only if you took uh, the Yankees to win the AL pennant before the LDS. Number three, Carlos Rodon under 14 and a half outs for game one tonight. Number four, Aaron Rodgers under 32 and a half yards, longest completion for Monday Night Football. And then also Monday Night Football, Jets running back Brees Hall over three and a half receptions. You can go ahead and let me know what you think of those selections down below again. And don't be shy about dropping your best bets for Monday as well. I always enjoy reading those. Of course, you can always find my top plays at wt.buzz slash bp. Despite what happened on Sunday, I'm still number one this season with all football plays at wagertalk.com. It's a combined 33 and 16 record with all college and NFL that's 68% winners, plus 48.18 units. I'm a perfect 7-0 the last two weeks in college. Don't forget to make sure to be subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. Click that bell for instant alerts. That way you're reminded when all of your favorite shows, including this one and the Morning Wager with me and Mark Zinno, drop. That's going to do it for Monday's edition of the Power 5. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Until next time, let's catch some tickets.